So the first thing to do with explaining textual substitution is just to break down the notation. The notation on the left here is much more common than the notation on the right, but they're both um, relatively common to see, so I'll be explaining both of them. In this notation, E represents our original expression. And from our original expression, we're going to be taking some variable that may or may not exist in the original expression. In this case, the variable is x. And this operator here, this symbol here, means we're going to be taking all occurrences of the thing on the left and replacing them with the thing on the right. So in this case, we are taking all occurrences of x and we're going to replace them with r. r can be some expression. Um, it can be a number like three or it can be some kind of algebraic expression like z plus one. And all we're going to do is we're gonna look at our original expression e we're going to find everywhere where we see an x, and we're going to replace it with an r by substituting r in. So that could be 3 or z plus 1 or whatever it may be. And this can be any variable as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be x, and it doesn't necessarily have to even occur in e. But if it does not occur in e, then you won't perform any textual substitution, and e will remain unchanged simply because it doesn't exist. For example, if I had e equals 2x, and I want to perform the textual substitution, um, let's say 2x, and I want to replace all occurrences of z with 3. Well, there's no z in 2x, so there's nothing to replace, and the answer is simply just 2x. Um, so that's what happens if x does not exist in the original expression. And this notation here is just an alternative way of writing what I just explained. So e is your original expression, x is the variable that is to be replaced within e, and r is the expression that we're going to substitute in in place of x. So for example, if I wanted to write this substitution here in the other notation, I can write 2x, and then I can put a z up here because we're replacing all occurrences of z, and a 3 down here because the expression with which we are um, replacing z is 3. So this is how you would write this in the other notation. So let's do some examples to illustrate the concept of a textual substitution. So the first problem up here on the top left, we want to take all occurrences of x and replace them with r in the expression e. So this notation is equivalent to this notation here, and we're going to solve this textual substitution. So the first step is to simply replace all of the um, placeholders for expressions in the question with the known expressions that we are given here as per the example. So we know e is 2x plus y, 2x plus y. And we are taking all occurrences of x and replacing them with r. And we're given that r is 4z. So this is really what that question is asking in terms of all of the known variables and expressions. So now we can actually perform the substitution. So all this is saying here is we're going to take all occurrences of x, we're going to replace them with 4z. So let's do that here. We're going to say 2 times x, but x is being replaced with 4z. So it's 2 times 4z plus y. And we don't touch y because y doesn't appear in here at all. It's not being replaced. It's just going to stay as it is. And it's always good practice to leave the brackets in when you first perform the substitution and then remove them if they're unnecessary. In this case, we can expand it out and we can get 8z plus y as the answer to this first part. So the second problem, we're going to replace all occurrences of y in e with r. Again, these two notations are equivalent. And the first step is going to simply be to replace um, the placeholders in this question with our knowns. So 2x plus y, that's our expression e, and we're taking all occurrences of y, and we are replacing them with r. And again, r is 4z. So this is really what the question is asking. And this time, we're going to be replacing y. So 2x stays the same. We don't touch it because we're not doing anything with x plus, and then we're going to replace y with 4z. And we can remove the unnecessary parentheses to get 2x plus 4z. So that would be the answer to the second problem. In the third problem here, we're going to perform two textual substitutions. 
So something you should know when encountering a problem like this about textual substitutions is that they are left associative. They're left associative. And what that basically means is that you have to go from left to right when you're evaluating multiple. So in this case, we're going to start with performing this textual substitution, and then we can perform this one. When you see them written out separately like this, you cannot perform the substitution simultaneously. You have to perform them one at a time from left to right. So as before, let's start by substituting in what we know. So we know that e is 2x plus y, 2x plus y. And we're going to be taking all occurrences of x and replacing them with r. So r is 4z. And then we're going to be taking all occurrences of y and replacing them with m. So m is z plus 1. So this is really what the question is asking in terms of the things that we know. So the first step here is going to be to perform this textual substitution right here, the leftmost one. So in this case, that's going to be taking all occurrences of x and replacing them with 4z. So we're going to have 2 times 4z. And we don't touch y quite yet plus y, we're gonna put brackets around the entire expression, and then we're gonna perform y replaced with z plus one. So that's what we get after the first step. So we've just performed the leftmost textual substitution. Now we can perform the second textual substitution. So we're gonna leave this expression as it is here for now. We're gonna have two times four z plus, and now we're gonna be replacing y with z plus one plus z plus one. And then you can expand it out. You can get 8z plus z plus one, which is 9z plus one. And that would be the answer to this textual substitution. Um, so the final one here is kind of similar to the previous one, except this time we're performing both substitutions simultaneously, which is actually not always the same as performing them sequentially like this. In this example, however, they will end up being the same, but that is not always the case, and I will explain that later on. So the first step here is going to be repla replacing all of the placeholders in the expression with our knowns. So e again is 2x, 2x plus y. And then we're going to be taking x and y, and we're going to be replacing them with r and m. So r is 4z and m is z plus one. When you're using this kind of notation with the commas for the simultaneous substitution, it's always good to surround the expressions with uh, brackets like I've done here, just to keep it clear um, which of these corresponds to which of these. So in this case, we don't have to obey any particular order. We don't have to go left to right. We perform all of the substitutions in one step. So we're gonna do this all simultaneously. So we're going to say 2, and we're replacing x with 4z, so we can do that. Plus, and we can replace y at the same time. So y is being replaced with z plus 1. And this lands us where we were before. We can eliminate unnecessary brackets and expand things out to get 8z plus z plus 1, which is equal to 9z plus 1. So again, in this case, this is equivalent to this. Both of these results end up being the same. But that is generally not always the case. It just happens to be the case here. So in the first example we'll do here, we're going to have x. And in our expression x, we're going to replace all occurrences of x with z plus 3. So looking at this, oh, looking at this, you can identify x is the variable that we're going to replace. z plus 3 is our r which is the variable that we, or which is the expression that we are substituting in for x, and our original expression e is simply just x. So we can perform this substitution in just one line. We have our expression x. We're going to replace all occurrences of x with z plus 3. Since the entire expression is just one occurrence of x, our final result is going to be z plus 3. So we've replaced x with z plus 3 in our expression. So in this next example, we have this here as our e expression. So our original expression is x plus y. And then we're going to be replacing all occurrences of x with our, our expression, z plus 3. 
So we're going to take a look at this expression here, E. We're going to say, where do we see an x? Well, we've got an x there. So we're going to take all occurrences of x. We're going to replace it with z plus 3. So z plus 3 ends up in place of the x plus y. And then these parentheses are unnecessary. So you can remove them to get z plus 3 plus y as the final result for this textual substitution. An important note here is the significance of these two parentheses around our e expression. If we had not put these brackets here, we would have x plus y with the textual substitution x replaced with z plus 3. And if we were given this expression, we would be forced to assume that the parentheses go here. So in this expression y, there aren't any x's to replace. So this textual substitution simply does nothing, and our final result in this case would end up being x plus y, which is very different to the answer that we got here. So it's always important to pay attention to where you place the brackets around your expression when you are introducing a textual substitution. So in this next example here, we're going to take x times y, and we're going to replace all occurrences of x with z plus 3. So again, our, our expression here, our expression, sorry, is z plus 3, and our e is going to be x times y. And the variable that we are replacing is x. So we're going to take this expression here. We're going to look for occurrences of x, and we're simply going to swap it out. So we're going to end up with z plus 3 times y. Now, in this case, the parentheses that we put around this expression when we did the substitution are actually not unnecessary, and they cannot be removed. So this is our final expression, and we should not remove these parentheses here. And again, it's a good time to point out the significance of these two parentheses around our e expression, because had we been given x times y with all occurrences of x replaced by z plus 3, z plus 3, we would have been forced to assume that the parentheses go here. And so we would end up with x times y. Because again, there's no x to replace in the expression y. So this textual substitution would simply do nothing. And we would end up with this result, which is, again, very different from the result that we got over here. So in this example, we're going to perform a simultaneous substitution for x and y. So here we have our expression e, which is x plus 2y. And we're going to be replacing all occurrences of x with z plus 3 and all occurrences of y with z. So um, the first thing we're going to do is simply just perform the substitution. We can plug them both in in the same line, or we should do that because this is a simultaneous substitution. And you can tell from that notation where they're both in the same um, square brackets and they're just separated by a comma versus doing x uh, maps to something and then having y maps to something. Um, as separate, separate sections. So we know that we're going to be performing a simultaneous substitution based on the notation, and we can go ahead and replace both variables at the same time. So x gets replaced with z plus 3, and we're going to be adding 2y, and y gets replaced with z. And now we can remove the unnecessary parentheses, so we end up with z plus 3, plus 2z, which ends up being 3z plus 3. So that's how you can perform that substitution. And it's important to note that in this case, doing this simultaneous substitution would actually yield the same result as performing um, x mapped to z plus 3, and then performing y mapped to z Um, sequentially. So in this case, these two both do yield the same result of 3z plus 3, but that will not always be the case, and the next example will illustrate that. Additionally, um, it's important again to notice the significance of the parentheses around the e expression. If we had been given x plus 2y with x, y, 
mapped to z plus 3. And z, then we would be forced to assume that the parentheses are here. Again, there would be no x to substitute for in this expression, so the whole x part of this textual substitution goes away. But there is a y in this case to substitute for. So what we would end up with is simply the result if we were to just plug in y to this second half or the second term here. So, uh, sorry, plug in y equals z to the second term. So we end up with x plus 2z, which is a very different result, once again, from what we get if we perform it um, without, uh, with, with the parentheses around the entire expression versus without any parentheses at all. So in this final example, we're going to be taking our expression e, which in this case is going to be x plus 3y, and we're going to be simultaneously replacing all occurrences of x with y and all occurrences of y with x. So basically what this does is it swaps x and y. That's effectively what this is saying here. It's saying take all the x's, replace them with y, take all the y's, replace them with x, and do it at the same time. So if we perform this simultaneously, we're going to start by replacing all occurrences of x with y. So we're going to end up with a y here. And then on the same line, we're going to also replace all occurrences of y with x. So we're going to have an x here. And again, all we've done is essentially swap x and y as per this textual substitution here. And then we can remove our unnecessary parentheses to get y plus 3x. So now we're going to take a look at what this would be if we had done them sequentially instead. So what if we were given x plus 3y, and we were told to perform the textual substitutions like this, x mapped to y and y mapped to x. So in this case, since we have them separated into two pieces, we have to perform the leftmost substitution first and then the rightmost substitution. So we're going to deal with x first. So we're going to replace all occurrences of x with y. So that's going to be y plus 3y. We don't touch this term because we're not replacing any y's yet. And then we're going to put the big brackets around the whole thing and then leave our substitution for y equals x, which we have not performed yet. So now that we've performed the first substitution, we can go ahead and perform the second one. This time, since we replaced x with y, we've introduced a new y that now needs to be substituted for when we perform this second substitution. So we're going to end up with x plus 3x. And this result is very different from this result. So as you can see from this example, Doing these sequential substitutions is not always the same as performing these simultaneous substitutions. And it comes from the fact that when we mapped x to y in the first substitution on the left here, we introduced an additional y, which then gets substituted for when we perform the second substitution. Versus when we were doing them simultaneously, you don't have that issue because there is no time for you to replace one and then have it replaced by the next substitution, since both substitutions occur on the same line.